to my channel. I am Suzy Q at suzyacuñaria at gmail.com and to my Q subscribers, I thank you very much for your support. Do not forget I am always available to you for any ideas you want to share with me and any comments and suggestions you may have as well. For those of you who are new to my stage, I thank you for tuning in and welcome. Please feel free to take a spot on your platform and let's get to know each other. Now to the most important thing. As I mentioned in my previous video, I have a guest with me today to shed light on a topic I hope you will all enjoy. This person is truly remarkable. He's uh, quite intelligent, well-versed and knowledgeable in an array of topics and I really enjoy picking his brain. Today, he's here to talk about music. I thought I knew about classical music until I met this person and realized I haven't even scratched the surface of the different kinds of music out there. Let me get you all to my guest platform and have him share with you his thoughts on classical music. So, Rob, the platform is all yours. Susie, thanks for the invite to your studio today. You asked me to say a few words about classical music. I know an old gray-haired guy talking about classical music, how unique, how original, but I actually like contemporary music. I grew up with the Stones, the Beatles, Crosby, Stills and Nash, Motown, Led Zepp, but I always liked classical music. I remember the 1812 Overture, Tchaikovsky, with the cannons and the, the bells going off and the great ending. We heard it on cartoons, of course, as kids, but I developed an affinity towards classical music. And down through the years, when I taught, I actually taught finance and history. I didn't teach music, so this is rudimentary. Uh, if you're music teachers out there, please, no letters of complaint. I am just a novice myself. But I used it as an aid or a guide, and I was biased towards Beethoven. And that doesn't uh, negate or, you know, I'm not uh, denigrating any other composers. Mozart, his Lacrimosa, three minutes. If you haven't heard it, it's worth hearing. Bach, if you like religious music. There's Bach starting with Yesu. But Beethoven always had a place for me. And I had a professor in graduate school, Dr. Lee, he was from China. And Dr. Lee always praised Eastern philosophy and Eastern culture. In 1949, he came from China to the United States because of the Communist Revolution. Mao had taken over. And he was an academic, he was afraid for his life, and he told his fellow colleagues, listen, send me a letter, if conditions are good, send me a letter telling me the weather is good, I'll come back to China. If you're not sure, just say it's cloudy. He said, Robert, I never received the letter. So he stayed in the United States, but one day, while he was talking about Eastern culture, he looked at me, and this is many, many years ago, 40 years ago now, and he said, there's one thing we don't have in China. We don't have Beethoven. We've never produced a Beethoven. My own kids, and their, their genre is not classical music, nor are they musicians, but they have an appreciation for classical music because they heard it growing up. If I play Beethoven's third symphony, his heroic, Eroica, the end of the first movement, my son will always say to me how beautiful this ending is, this first movement. And years ago when the King's Speech came out, the best movie, when he was giving his speech, my daughter called me up uh, when he's giving his speech about declaring war on Nazi Germany, 1939, September 3rd, King George. She said, Daddy, they play Beethoven's seventh second movement, her favorite piece. She heard it growing up. My son, coincidentally, at the end of the same movie, they play Beethoven's piano concerto number five, the Emperor Concerto, second movement. I've never heard anyone say to me, they don't like the second movement. Most people say it's beautiful and rapturing. In fact, I believe if you listen to all of Beethoven, doing yourself a favor, you'll find something in there that you like. I mentioned this different symph symphonies. The Sixth Symphony, the Pastoral Symphony, beautiful, light piece of music. Most people don't troll when they write notes about music, classical music, like you see in other areas on the internet. But recently I was reading in a woman wrote down, I love the sixth, the most beautiful piece Beethoven has ever written. Who needs the fifth? Who needs the ninth? Well, who needs the fifth and the ninth? The fifth, the Fate Symphony, the great bum 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 bomb, and the beautiful ending, and the ninth, Leonard Bernstein used the great ode to joy in the Ninth Symphony when they reopened the Berlin Wall in 1989, at a symphony on Christmas Day in Berlin. The European Union used it as their anthem. East and West Germany used it as their Olympic tune before they 
completely ruptured and then reunified. So the Ninth Symphony. But a lot of people don't know off of the Ninth Symphony. We hear the Ode to Joy. There's also another piece by Beethoven called The Choral Fantasy. It only lasts for, the last four minutes. It lasts for about half an hour. But I, last, I recommend the last four minutes of The Choral Fantasy. So there you have Seventh Symphony, Second Movement. Piano Concerto Number 5, The Emperor's Concerto, Second Movement. Ninth Symphony, of course, Final Movement, the Fourth. By the way, the Pastoral Symphony has five movements for whatever reason. Most symphonies have four, but... And then we get to the Choral Fantasy, beautiful piece of music. Plus, you had Violin Concertos. There are some great Violin Concertos there, out there. Um, Brooks, Final Movement, and his Third Movement, beautiful piece of music. Tchaikovsky's. Violin Concerto, Mendelssohn's, and Beethoven's, often ranked among the best. Although I happen to like Mendelssohn in this case, amongst all four of those. And Beethoven's Ninth, going back once more to the, the Ninth Symphony, people say um, when they do voting, and again, it's subjective. You like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't, and that's certainly your prerogative. But it's often considered the best piece of classical music ever written by the majority of people. And again, that doesn't mean if you don't like it or you like something else by someone else, that's certainly your prerogative. The Seventh Symphony, which I alluded to before in the King's Speech, the final movement is so different for the time, so upbeat. Wagner called it the apotheosis of dance. Now, Wagner, Wagner in English with the W, Wagner is another person, another conductor, another composer, I should say, actually, that I like very much. Beautiful music. People say Wagner's too heavy. Well, he's got some heavy music, but the overture to the Meister Singers, the Master Singers of Nuremberg, the, the Fest March in Tannhäuser, the Pilgrim's Chorus in Tannhäuser, and someone sitting right in this room, our host, she likes the end of the ring cycle in Gotterdammerung, the Twilight of the Gods, the last few minutes of the immolation scene. It's beautiful, beautiful music. I wouldn't call it heavy at all. Spike Lee in a homage to Apocalypse Now, the great Vietnam War movie, <clears throat> where they come in with the helicopters playing Wagner's Ride of the Valkyries, he uses that as in the five bloods, the four servicemen are going upriver, and here comes Wagner's Apocalypse Now. Once again, it's coming through. So, my favorite, Beethoven. There's also Tchaikovsky, his beautiful music from Swan Lake. I mentioned his piano concerto, his violin concerto, uh, Sleeping Beauty, so many other pieces, and Wagner. But I've had to pick one, I'd say start with Beethoven. They say he wrestled with the gods. Even other composers from Brahms who held him in the highest esteem considered him to be, I guess you would say, the capo di tutti capi, the boss of bosses. That's really all I have to say right now. So for beginners, like uh, people who know nothing about classical music, what would you suggest? Well, that the pieces I recommended, you know, again, I would listen to the second movement of piano concerto number five. I also like piano concerto number four very, very much, but second movement, just listen to that. Uh, the Ode to Joy, the end of Beethoven's ninth. The first movement in Beethoven's fifth, these are symphonies I'm talking about now, the last two. Um, the choral fantasy, the last four minutes. If you want to hear a great organ piece, listen to Sassan. His organ finale, go to the finale on that. It's, Beautiful, if organ is what you want to hear. So there are other composers out there. And again, I'm using the Baroque, the classical, the romantic, all under the umbrella of classical. And I know it's a long genre, a couple of hundred years, 300 years. Getting contemporary times, you can go to Leonard Bernstein, Aaron Copland, George Gershwin, and American music, which wouldn't be called classical, but it's modern American music. But I would start with Beethoven, Piano Sonata, the Moonlight Sonata. I mean, the sonata is beautiful. The Moonlight, uh, listen to that also. Moonlight Sonata. If you like the violin, the violin concerto. Symphonies, again, Ode to Joy. Beginning of the Fifth Symphony. Um, second movement, again, as I said, in the Piano Concerto. Number five, the Emperor Concerto. That'd be my recommendations. Just to get your ears started and listening. And you'll find what you like. You can go on YouTube and best of whomever. Brahms, Bach, Schubert, Mendelssohn. Again, I like the Romantic era for the most part, but there are other places you can go. You go back to Handel, you can go to uh, Haydn back in the Baroque era. And of course, as I mentioned, Mozart, many hold him in the highest esteem. So, a lot out there. You do yourself a disservice if you don't listen, or at least try. And if you don't like it, okay. It's up to you.
And as our German friends would say, das ist alles. Vielen Dank. Thank you. I hope this was very invigorating and insightful to watch to you all out there. And if you like this platform discussion today, please like and give this video a thumbs up. Do not forget to click on the subscribe button on the right side of your screen and turn your notification bell on for new videos if you're just, if you're just joining us. Click on my social media links above to be connected to my Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. I urge you to get out there or on YouTube and try some of these songs recommended. I will leave uh, some of the composer's name and songs down below this video to make it easy for you to enjoy and share with others. And as always, share your thoughts and ideas on music that you like. And that's it for today. I will see you next week on my stage, your platform. Oh, it's freezing. It's freezing. But I'm done. See you next week. about classical music but I like some of it it could be soothing sometimes to listen to um, favorite composer you like in the classical world um, if you have to listen to it I really yeah I don't know 
I'm not sure. Would I, you be open to it? Like, sure. Uh, thank you so very no much, John. No problem. All right. Okay. My name is Emma. Emma? Uh, e M M A H. Oh, Emma. Um, it's a hard question. I listen. I'm the person that says I listen to everything, but I do kind of listen to everything. Jazz, electronic music. How about classicals? Classicals pretty cool. I think I would listen to that the least. That's not usually my first choice. <laughs> but if it's playing, I won't mind. Right. Do you have any favorite composer, like uh, in classical music? Um, I know Debussy and like Chopin, but that's about it. <laughs> How about Beethoven? Do you like Beethoven? Beethoven's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely not your first choice. Yeah. Alright, so can you tell me your name please? Eric. Eric? Yep. Okay, and uh, what kind of music do you usually listen to, Eric? Um, I'm all over the place. I like all type of music. I came up, when I was younger, I, I did a lot of like metal, hardcore shows, things like that. But I, I'm like a hip-hop head at heart, I'd say. How about classical music? Yeah, I Did mean... Did you ever get into that? Sorry, what was that? Did you ever get into classical music? Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of classical music I've gotten into is because I... A lot of hip-hop songs I like sampled that. Uh -huh. So I would, I would be interested to know what um, songs were sampled, and I'd learn a lot of music through that way. Why, do you do like a mixing? Like, uh, do um, you do no, I don't. Music? I just enjoy music. I mean, I'm not going to say that when I'm walking the street, most of the time I'm listening to classical music. But I understand its importance. Even, you know, if you like hip hop, a lot of it, a lot of it took roots from that, and everything's borrowed from hip hop as well. That's true. Do you have any composer that you like in the classical world? Um, I mean, I have a couple songs here and there. I know of one guy, Eric Satay. A lot of people uh, sampled him. We have this first, the same first name. But I'm not gonna say. How about Beethoven? Like yeah, of course, Beethoven, yeah, Mozart, everyone's right. like skimmed through all that. Thank you so very much, Eric. Yeah, Thanks. no problem. See you soon. Have a good day. My name, my name's Marcel Rocha. Oh. Good to meet you. <laughs> now, <laughs> unfortunately, in this situation. Oh, you do the mask. Don't worry about that. <laughs> anyway, so what kind of music do you usually listen to? I'm a weird one because I'm all over the place, though. I'm really literally all over the place. I mean, uh, I mean... I mean, I love classics. I love seventies. I love disco. But then I love, I, I love a lot of eighties alternative synth music. But then I'm a hardcore R and B, like me too. Like R and B head. Like just like, but m not so much the commercial like uh, mainstream stuff. Even though of course there's classics of those that you always go back to. But uh, you know, I love nineties R and B, uh, and you know, I think they need to bring it back to that sort of real songwriting because mm. I love that you I know. miss that in records you know instead of everyone sounding the same and please no autotune can somebody kill the autotune already like what is going on <laughs> you know in the end I like everything I, I, I know people that are just like I just listen to this kind of music and that's it and I'm like I don't know I, I, I don't know <laughs> I don't know that's like eating the same food every day you know what I mean it's like it's, you know, it's like people do that to their dogs. They're eating the same stuff every day. But I, I got to change, you know. Even my coffee changes every day. So it's like today I feel like I'm a latte. Tomorrow I feel like, like you know, like an old latte. No, it's, 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 it's good to change. It keeps it fresh. You, did you ever get into classical music? I've never been so much into classical music. Mm. That's the one thing, right. you know what I mean? Uh, uh, I I probably should explore. Not really much into, into musicals or classical. I'm... You know, R and B, my my first love, and electronic Most music. Most people's first love, yeah, R &B, yeah. yeah. And it, it, music to me is a mood. I'm hardly ever home. I, I find like classical music for me. And this is just for me. You know, I don't want to offend anybody. But I feel like it's more like of a mood. Like if I'm home, just kind of, just as a background, kind of relaxing. But I'm always on the go, on right. the on on the street, walking around, running around. So I always want something more like upbeat or a rhythm or or like a certain attitude to kind of get me like especially when you're here in New York you need something to kind of like <laughs> fight the the you know what I mean the the ruckus of the city to go against the, the full like you know the, the city's hard you know so uh but but classical music it's I mean it's definitely always 
being in the background for me instead of the forefront. But I, I mean, I appreciate it. I, I would never be like, like, like juvenile like that about it. But I just feel like I have, you know, I, I didn't stick to it 100%. But not, nothing against the music it was just more like the dedication of, of, of the piano. But uh, uh, you never know. You're you right. might catch me in this corner next year, and I'm awesome. gonna be like, <laughs> I'm gonna be full, full, full classical music. Totally. But oh, I, I'm pretty much right now with outdoor seating. I, I like the older uh, '70s ABBA, uh, but also do some classical music early on. And um, since in an Austrian restaurant. I go sometimes really ha uh, hardcore traditional Austrian with folk music and um, awards or <clears throat> yeah, just. Um, Who is your favorite um, classical music composer? Uh, like Beethoven? Uh, Beethoven yeah, I, I was about to say Mozart since he's uh, from Austria, but uh, I, I think uh, uh, Beethoven is. Uh, one of my, I do also like uh, Tchaikovsky, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, has some uh, good stuff, but uh, yeah, and, uh, I think if you do not appreciate classic music, you are not appreciating any music. <laughs> so I think this is like the foundation of all music. You might not know classic music, but you hear it constantly. Uh, you're just uh, not aware of it. You call somewhere, they put you on hold, and there's classical music as a background. Yeah, so if you just uh, start listening to it, you will hear it constantly. If you're interested to it, find out what is that. Because it, it, it's, it's first, it's timeless, and second, um, it's very soothing. It's, uh, um, it, it calms you down, it's, it's just like, and it's not only uh, music, those things, they always have a story behind. Mm -hmm. Every song has a story behind. Where was it written? What What does the song mean? What? So the composer, there was a lot of thoughts behind. It's just like th those days, you know, you know, rap music, whatever. They all try to bring over um, a uh, a message, and that's what they had the same thing there. Right. It was the music was uh, uh, bringing a story, a message. Right, so right. if you wanna if you wanna uh, get into it, find out, research the story behind. It. You're gonna love the music. All right, folks, that's it. So this is Erwin. Thank you so much for doing this. Thanks See for you. having me. Absolutely. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs>